Uh, birds are more likely to crash into buildings and die in six areas in Singapore. Well, that's according to a study. Well, these include Springleaf, with uh, lower buildings and near forests, and Tengah, which incorporates forests into its design. In fact, it's lower-level buildings near greenery that confuses birds. For more, we have the researcher with us on Zoom from New Mexico. David Tan is a Singaporean PhD candidate from the University of New Mexico. Thanks for joining us this evening, Mr. Tan. Uh, now, these, what other areas besides Springleaf and Tunga uh, that, that in your research you have found are danger zones for birds? And is there anything that these areas have in common that would suggest why they are so dangerous for birds colliding into them? Well, thank you for having me. So I think the way we came up with these six areas really was looking at the URA master plan, uh, which the Singapore government publishes uh, every so often. And really what we did was we took our models that models where birds are most likely to collide and projected them onto the URA master plan in order to find out which areas of Singapore were most likely to have high rates of bird building collisions. And so uh, you rightly point out that Springleaf and Tanga are going to be hotspots because they are really, really close to uh, existing rainforests. Uh, but the other places we identified as well include places like uh, Clementine Woods, which is earmarked for residential development, um, the uh, Turf Club and Bukit Brown area, which is also residential uh, in the future, and places like Pongal End, and also one industrial area uh, in the Pasir Ris Pyalaba area. Bearing in mind, of course, that we base these projects off of uh, the 2019 master plan, which did not incorporate the future development plans uh, for Pyalaba Air Base. Now, um, sort of the, me the measures that we can put into place to reduce bird building collisions really is to just make the glass more visible to birds. A lot of birds have difficulty distinguishing between glass and uh, the reflections, uh, basically plants, right? Because plants are being reflected in these uh, glass panels. And so uh, by using things like stickers, the American Bird Conservancy suggests that um, we put stickers in a two inch by two inch grid pattern in order to make uh, these surfaces more visible to birds. And that should help reduce the uh, likelihood of bird building collisions. So Mr. Tan, the the study that you've done also showed that shorter buildings near greenery confuses birds to some degree. Can you explain that a little more for us? I mean, especially in context of what you've just said about uh, the, the glass perhaps not being so visible to birds. I mean, why, why can't they avoid the shorter buildings specifically? So, um, the, specifically, the species that seem to be most strongly affected by this proximity to the forest right, are species like pigeons and starlings and also migrating uh, flycatchers. And these are species that roost in the forest and move between forest patches right, uh, as they forage or as they migrate. And so, really, um, um, the reason why these these areas seem to be the most high risk is probably because these birds are exiting the forest in these areas and that's where they're first encountering these buildings. Now, uh, as to why shorter buildings kill more birds, we're not exactly sure why. That's, that's what our analysis tells us. But my suspicion is because most of the trees that we have in Singapore do not go higher than, say, four or five floors, maybe six floors at the most, right? And so these are probably going to be the areas where vegetation is going to be most strongly reflected. And that's probably where uh, collisions are going to be at their highest frequency uh, for these birds. Now, um, of course, uh, this is just one part of our results, right? Looking at the forest side of things. But the other part of our results also looks at things like light pollution uh, and, and that's also uh, come up with some very concerning results. All right, Mr. Tan, this is a, a study that has taken seven years. Am I taking there are more years to come, or have you taken seven years so far oh. and it's not complete? Well, uh, we actually started this study in 2013. Uh, okay, we first right. collected we collected our first dead bird in 2013, and so it's been you know more than a decade since we started this. And really, this has sort of been the um, the product of 
uh, Singaporeans, regular Singaporeans reporting dead birds that they see. And so without the participation of, you know, uh, regular uh, people, right, we would not even have so, so the data. Very quickly, uh, why, to, why to I, I needed to check the time factor with you was uh, all these suspicions and hypotheses you have, you have had, in fact, given the time that you just mentioned, you have had the time to test your hypotheses. Is that how you have conducted your research? So you, you just don't have suspicions. You actually have evidence-based results. So this is over 10 years we've collected uh, dead bird reports from all over Singapore, and we ran models, right, predictive models that uh, 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 basically look for correlations and patterns in where these birds are dying. And so in general, we really see so many birds dying in areas that are really, really close to forests, uh, it, you know, especially places that are wedged between forests, like the southern ridges and the central catchment nature reserve, right? That whole southern area of Singapore seems to have a very high rate of bird building collisions, and as well as areas surrounding the western and uh, central catchment nature reserves as well. Mr. Tan, thank you very much for chatting to us this evening. We appreciate it. David Tan there on his study in Singapore of birds that uh, have been crashing into our buildings.